Good heavens. I wonder if the amazing Kreskin saw that. <laughs> uh, he is with us tonight, and this gentleman uh, here who started on our show, and he has a bizarre, warped, funny sense of humor, and he will be headlining at the Metro Club in Forest Hills, New York, starting the 6th of March, and in Las Vegas at the Thunderbird, March 21st. He'll be in there for four weeks. Would you welcome David Brenner? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I just, um, I've been having a great time. I was in uh, Las Vegas for two weeks. I just came back. And... Thank you very much. <laughs> it was great there. You know, that's the great thing about that town. Something happening all the time, right? Did you hear the latest news out of Las Vegas? About a week ago, week and a half ago, Linda Lovelace, the star of uh, Deep Throat, was arrested in Vegas. They raided her hotel room and they found some illegal pills and things. And what amazed me is she didn't swallow the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. She could have swallowed the whole hotel if she wanted to. <laughs> I and then coming here, it's a weird transition, folks, that for you who live in L.A., to come from a place like uh, Vegas or New York, where I live now, though I wasn't, I'm not a New Yorker. Oh, I'm not a New Yorker. Stop applauding. I'm not. I lived there. I was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's my place. Oh, I can't believe it. Right? Philadelphia, just like Vegas. One difference. It's open 24 hours a week. That's the difference. <laughs> But, I can't, but to come from a place like New York or Vegas where it's exciting into L.A., because L.A., people are very relaxed here. You have to admire. They move and talk so slowly. It's so nice. Before I come here, you know how I get ready? For one week, I swim in jello. It's moving. <laughs> Except you drive quickly. I was on that freeway. Forget that 55-mile-an-hour limit. No one's sticking that limit. You, can, you can't stop people in California from driving fast. When they park, they're doing 75 miles an hour. <laughs> And that's what's great out here. Your parking is sensational. To a New Yorker, it amazes me. Out here, when you drive somewhere, no matter where you're going, you pull up with your car and you park right in front of the place where you're going. You know what it's like in New York City? If you're driving in to visit someone who lives in Manhattan and you see a spot in Connecticut, you pull in. <laughs> but who owns a car in New York City? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You better off with a gay gorilla. What are you going to do with a car? It's like, but I, like here. Here they have something when the gasoline shortage hit back east, it wasn't as important because we have something there, you know, you don't see in L.A. It's, it's called walking. Yeah. Because no one walks in L.A. It's against the law. You get arrested if you're caught walking. What's that man doing over there? What are you moving his legs like this? What are you, a pervert? Get him in a wagon. <laughs> and you know what else is strange here? The language is different. Like people in L.A., no matter what you ask them, they always answer by the same answer. No matter what the question is, they always say, far out. How are you? Far out. How's your new house? Far out. Where is it? Far out. <laughs> I'll tell you what program I watch here, but it isn't only here. It's all over the country. I never understand. There's a program on television in your hometown. It's in every town in America, and it's called, like, Thought for Tomorrow or Sermon Ed. It ends the television day, and it's always a man of cloth comes out. I never understand him. I saw this one in Benson, Utah, a few weeks ago. man of cloth comes out, and he says something like, Good evening, which reminds me of a story. <laughs> I met a man the other day, he didn't know whether to buy black shoes or brown shoes, whether to get rubber heels and soles or leather heels and soles. And that's what life is. <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning, I crawl around my hotel room looking for my shoes. What did I bring? I my... But we all say dumb things. Like, you ever hear the sermonette in New York? There's a great sermonette. They come out. Good evening, New Yorkers. Are you alive? Thank God. <laughs> Actually, it isn't that bad. I saw, I've been living there eight years. I only saw one crime. It was funny. A man obviously had his wallet stolen on the street. And the thief is making his getaway down the street. And this man said something that I know I would have said. And probably most of us would have said. And I never realized how dumb it is until I heard him say it. As the thief is running away, this man said, Hey, come back here! <laughs> But we all say dumb things. I heard a man the other day talking. I don't know what they're talking about. One of them says, yeah, well, you can't see it with your naked eye. What, if some people have little pants and a hat? <laughs> Would you ever have someone say to you, keep your ears open? Who the hell can close them? <laughs> Man, we're all dumb. Huh? My mother used to say great things. My mother's a great one for saying things. She's a sweetheart, you know, and she used to say things. I'll tell you one that made me angry today. A man hit me with an expression I can't stand. When someone's talking to you and they want to leave, and then they say, yeah, gee, I'd love to talk to you, but I got to run. And they never run. 
My mother's expressions are great. Like, I'd come in the house, and I always would get sick, and I didn't want to show my mother I was sick, because she'd get upset, you know? And I'd try to hide it, but every once in a while, I'd sneeze in the house, my mother would always say, all right, David, where did you catch a cold? Where? I was walking by Barry's house. I jumped out of the bushes, went up my nose. Uh, pneumonia was on the other side of the lawn. I almost got it. I'm so lucky. <laughs> Well, I'd come home after school, my mother would always say, David, your lunch is on the table. Where else would she put it? <laughs> like I'd walk in one day, David, your tuna fish is in the cellar. Tonight, your hot dog's gonna be in the backyard near the bushes. <laughs> Tomorrow, we're gonna hide your eggs in the neighborhood, you have to find them. <laughs> and eat everything on your plate, the children in Europe are starving. What does that mean? You mean while I'm eating as a kid in Europe going, oh, I feel better. <laughs> She still says it to me. David, drink all your oil. Said, no, we're out of oil back east. I guess it's hitting here too. But you know, it's, it's bad because of the cold. But New Yorkers, I panic right away. You know, being from Philadelphia, we panic easily. Oh, it's 10 o'clock, a cloud, you know. But, <laughs> but I panicked. Then I thought, why don't I act like a New Yorker? We're out of oil. So you ever see New Yorkers? Nothing bothers them. They're crazy. They don't care what's happening. Nothing can get them, right? No problem's too big. You ever see New Yorkers? What's the matter? No heat, we'll burn our feet. <laughs> Uh, really, if all the animals escaped out of the zoo and were running through Manhattan like crazy, I don't think anyone in New York would pay any attention to them. Like, have giraffes going down Madison Avenue, a cab driver. Get out of the way, you long-necked freak, I gotta turn! <laughs> right, water buffaloes in Alexander's. Fat ladies' department's over there, move it. We don't want to go home. And... <laughs> New York is a blase. You can walk down the street in New York City, and I actually saw this happen, folks, and you can see manhole covers explode right out of the street. Boom! And a typical New Yorker will go, heads. <laughs> How are you? Fine, I'm just fine, sir. You know what, what I thought of when you mentioned that wallet? You did something, a line about a wallet or something? Yeah, I'd come back here. Yeah. Who was it that told the story? I know there's an apocryphal story that actually happened, but it's one of those stories that makes the rounds that. I don't know what the somebody told on the show one night that a friend of his was in New York. Uh, oh, and he was walking down the street, and a guy bumped up to him, you know, like with a newspaper, and the guy immediately felt, and his wallet is gone. So he turns around, he sees the guy, and he runs after this guy, screaming at him, pushes him to a doorway, and says, All right, give me the wallet. And the guy hands over the wallet and puts it in his pocket. At the end of the day, the guy goes back to his hotel room and walks in, and there's his wallet on the bureau. <laughs> It sounds like it's too good to, be, to really happen, but isn't that a wild... And the guy says, you know, he says, give me the wallet. And the guy gave him the wallet and walks in. It's almost too good to happen. How you been? I've Things been going fine. well? Oh, yeah, they're just going great. I just, yeah. you know, was at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. I had a ball yeah. there. You had a pretty good year, haven't you? Oh, excellent. Touch wood, yeah. Yeah. Great year. You get most of your material, like, uh, from observations, right? I mean, like you did, Lions Mere Mother. Yeah, I, I just keep, you know, it's just things that strike me funny. And everyone has a different style, I think, writing. Like Steve Landsberg, good comedian friend of mine. Right. He's on the show Friday, yeah. right? Well, he has one of the strangest. Uh, yeah, he's got a, he, he's got a strange he's got a shingle mind, loose. first of all. Yeah, more than a shingle. The whole roof is coming off of him. <laughs> but what he does to write is he writes in the shower. He stands in a shower, and out loud, he goes into characters. And he has a tape recorder, you know, on a sink. And he's yelling. And then when he gets out of the shower, he plays it and listens and sees if he's creative. You can always tell he's been very creative. He, he's all wrinkled on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Do you write things down as soon as you think of them? I, I, yeah, sometimes I dream. I dream lines, which is very strange. I dream... Uh, Do you ever write them down and wake up the next day? And can't read it? Well, and, well it doesn't mean anything. You wake yeah. up in the middle of the night and you write down and says, the pelican sat in the butter. And during right. the dream, that was very funny, oh, it was but it means great. absolutely nothing yeah. the next morning. And it's really terrible as a bachelor. You can imagine a companion. You see someone get up in the middle of the night in the dark with a pencil and paper going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Weird. But I think, I think probably, uh, well, it, it, you know how I really started? The way I really write is um, I work with the audience. I learned yeah. that. I was at Pip's Coffee House in Brooklyn. And I, one night, it was a bad rainstorm, about 30 people in the audience. So I didn't feel like doing an act. So you try out something. So I said, what do you want to talk about? And they would uh, just give me subjects. So it started to happen there. And George Schultz, the owner, said, do that. And somebody that's how said I write. Somebody said, I saw you the other night. Uh, 
Oh, I'll take tennis from Bob Trappenberg. Said you were at the comedy store? Yeah, and working out. Trying out some stuff? Trying out and, and asking him what. But I'll tell you, the strangest is that, uh, you know, you become jaded because you got to keep coming up with the material, you know? And especially, like, I was figuring out, I've done over four hours on this show. Now, where are you going to get more and more and more? Well, one day in New York, you become so jaded, all you do is look for jokes. You get in that kind of mood. You're, you're just, everything's a joke. And I went out, I'm so ashamed that this is so funny that I went out in New York, it's terrible. I went out in New York and it was that snowstorm. And I'm going across Third Avenue and a woman slipped and fell in the snow, but she didn't get hurt because she fell in a snowbank. But her shopping bag opened and a cake slid out and landed in the slush. And right away, New Yorkers react as they do. One man stepped on the cake. You know. <laughs> Another one tried to jump on the old lady. It was really New York. <laughs> But I was the worst. I was the worst. I stood over this woman. I mean this. And I took out a paper and pencil and put cake in snow. <laughs> and, and she looked up at me and she said, you think this is funny? I said, I hope so. <laughs> Weird. You're just like the rest of them. Okay, let me do this. And then uh, Kreskin is going to come out and amaze us. Right? Better amaze us, because that's the way we build him. Put your throat is sore. Try Orison from Vic. <laughs> 